Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. So there's a new financial literacy quiz that only 50% of Americans can get right. So I just grabbed my phone and was like, hey, we need to record this. I think this will be fun and interactive and could be a great learning experience for us. So I've got my phone. I have not read the article in advance. So this will be my first time looking at it. I think it is five questions. It could be less. Again, I haven't scrolled down to see the answers. So I do not know, but I'm going to read them give you my thought process and then we'll scroll down and see what the answers are this is from yahoo finance and it is a survey from tiaa and smart asset so you can go and find the article yourself if you're looking for it i'll also if i remember put it in the description below all right let's go ahead and look into it okay so there's a 50 50 chance that malice car will need engine repairs within the next six months which could cost one thousand dollars 50 50 chance $1,000 cost here. At the same time, there's a 10% chance that he will need to replace the air conditioning unit within his house, which would cost $4,000. Yikes. Which poses the greater financial risk for Malik? So obviously the air conditioning bill costs way more, four times more in fact, but it's only 90, it's a 90% chance it won't happen. So I'm going with the 50-50. The $1,000 risk poses a greater threat to me. So that would be my first one is the $1,000. Number two here, Anna saves $500 each year for 10 years and then stops saving additional money. At the same time, Charlie saves nothing for 10 years, but then receives a $5,000 gift. Would you decide to save if both Anna and Charlie save 5% each year? Who will have more money in savings after 20 years? And this one is easy because we talk about this all the time. It's got to be Anna because Anna had a 10 year head start compounding at 5% every single year. This is the reason why I say don't wait to pay off all your debt and take 10 years, pay off all your student loans and then start investing. That 10 years is money you could have been compounding. You can say, hey, look, I got money. I'll put 40% to my debt, 60% to investing, or you can flip that. But the main thing is, get that money compounding because that is something you are never going to get back. So we'll see if that is true, but I'm going with Anna here. You have an entire decade ahead of Charlie, even though Charlie started off with more money. That's a classic, easy financial uh, answer that is almost right every single time. The person who starts earlier, even with a small amount of money, is likely going to end up with a bit more. Let's move on to number three. And there's only three questions. It's not five. All right. So Jose owes... $1,000 on a loan that has a compound interest rate of 20% per year. That's a lot. Okay, so uh, per year compounded annually. He makes no payments on the loan. That's not good either. <laughs> at this interest rate, uh, if he makes no payments on the loan at this interest rate, how many years will it take for that amount to double? Your possible answers here, less than five years, five to 10 years, more than 10 years, or don't know. Don't know is not an answer here. Okay, it's just not. That's not what we do in this class. Um, but this one is relatively easy. Just give you my thought process behind it. We know 20 times five is 100%. So five years, if it were just straight out, would double. But the key word here is compounding interest. That means I start off with $1,000. I multiply it times 20. That's going to give me, what, 1,200? Then 1,200 times another 20. So it's going to compound. And because it's compounding, it has to be less than five years. Uh, maybe it's four, doesn't matter. The key thing is, I know it's less than five years. That was one of the possible answers. So it has to be that. Um, that's the power of compounding interest. We have videos on that if you want uh, a deeper explanation on how that works. All right, so let's scroll down. Scroll, where are the answers here? All right, where the answers go? Oh, here they are, okay. So number one, answer number one is, despite the air conditioning, um, Potentially costing four thousand dollars, the likelihood of one thousand is a, is a far greater financial risk. We got that one right. The next one I thought it was kind of tricky because you know is risk gauged by probability or is it gauged by amount? Depends on how much you had saved, but we got that one right. Uh, the next one here, Anna would have more money after twenty years. We got that one right. That was relatively easy. And then number three, uh, if your answer was the third, to the third question was less than five years, then we got that right. So that was it. 
That was easy. I think we are better than 50% of Americans. That is the value of subscribing to this channel. Let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. Did you get them all right? Did you get one wrong? And if you got one wrong, let me know because that means I can create an entire video explaining the background behind that, the math or whether you use a whiteboard or not to really break these concepts down. Because remember, before doing this whole finance thing, I was a math teacher. That's what I did, seventh grade, Dallas, Texas, and that was my roots. So before any of this, before advisory, before books, I started as a teacher. So that is one reason why I think my style is a bit different than what you may see on other channels, but it's what I like to do. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Did you miss one? Do you need a better explanation on one? Feel free to let me know. All right, that is it for me today. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.